Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm Watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? So, check this out. I've got a new camera angle going on. I've got a new mount. We'll see how that goes. But the main reason I had to put it to the test for this video was because I've got way too much to try to fit in frame. So I'm just going to try it out. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. Do you like the first person tighter up angle that I normally use? Do you like this wider one? If you don't have a preference, that's cool too. I'm hoping to probably do both and I'll interchange them. But the purpose of this video today, well, let's just ask you a question. When you go to lunch with a buddy who's a watch friend, do you bring a whole bunch of watches to lunch with you so that you guys can, you know, check them out and play with them? <laughs> okay, that's the question, because that's what I did. Y'all know that I have my buddy Jay, one of my longest, dearest friends, and he just also happens to be in the watch hobby. Now, Jay also happens to love sushi, and we've got a place nearby that they do a pretty cool all-you-can-eat special, and they've got some strict rules, though. Like, for example, you, you can take as much as you want, but you got to eat what you take. And if you have any leftovers, they basically charge you uh, a lot <laughs> for that. So yeah, but it's a wonderful experience. So he and I go to lunch there periodically. Now that things are starting to normalize a little bit in the world, we went there the other day and it was fantastic. But because I haven't seen him in so long, I immediately went into like, Let's see what I can all bring to show him and share with him just with some of these watches that I have in right now. So some of these are mine. Some of these are, are loners. Some of them are tour watches. It's, it's really is a mixed bag. But these are what I brought to lunch with my buddy Jay. And so let's just check them out real quick. So I wear I, I was wearing that day and I'm wearing again my blue titanium camo G square. This thing is amazing. It has easily become, I don't want to say my favorite watch, but it's hard to take off. It really, really is. It is definitely a favorite and it's definitely a keeper. So that's pretty cool. That is what I wore to lunch. I didn't double wrist it that day because, you know, I don't know. I had all of these sitting here. I didn't really have to. But speaking of G's, open up this bad boy. And if you need to see the tag, you probably can't. This is what some refer to as the Stealth Wealth. And so I brought it along. It is in on loan from a friend of mine. One of, one of the nicest and most generous friends that I've got in this hobby. But he is letting me borrow this because when I did my video series on these, and you'll remember that I was particularly looking at the blue camo, the OG camo, and a bunch of my AliExpress kits and things like that. But I really was curious about this all black one. And up until that point in time, I didn't think I was going to care for it. I just didn't. I didn't have an interest in buying one and I didn't have easy access to borrow one like I've since borrowed this one. But now that I have it in person, I can see why so many people like it. So since I haven't been able to experience this, I want to check it out. And uh, so I haven't quite gotten Jay down the G-Shock rabbit hole yet the way I have my buddy Josh and a couple of others, but he is getting there. So that's a cool one. Now, the other one, speaking of G's, he is interested in the AliExpress kits and the GA2100s. So let me get these opened up. I brought along, this is my Gen 2 kit, and he was kind of comparing this to see if he wanted the Gen 3. Remember that the Gen 3 just has an integrated bracelet here. There's no, there's no attachment, like quick attach, like we've got right here. But, so yeah, so I brought along the GA2100 on the gen 2 kit and then i brought him one of my gen 1 so this is the yellow ga2100 that i have inside of the gen 1 kit which has a very similar aesthetic as the metal g's the the stock ones and you see the formatting there compared to like the bracelet on this which looks like more like the royal oak or whatever it's called the, the cassio the homage 
So yeah, so I brought these just so he could check it out and see what he would or wouldn't want. I'm pretty sure he's gonna go with something like this. He might go with the Gen 3. Um, so yeah, so let me just set these aside because I'm gonna end up with way too many watches in short fashion. But continuing down the G-Shock pipeline, I brought these two. And the reason is because one of these is real, one of these is not. And I wanted him just to kind of look at them side by side and give me his impressions on them. So this is going to end up making a big old mess. Maybe my editor will do some fast forward music while I get these open real quick. One sec. Now, let me pause real quick. I am looking at the not authentic one and it would be hard to tell if you didn't like own a bunch of G-Shocks or have good experience. I could see how somebody would be fooled by this. I mean, it's got a hang tag in here. It's got a warranty card and a booklet. You know, it's got the manual right here. And so, yeah, when I open this up, I'm going to have a detailed video. In fact, I'm probably going to have a couple of videos where I detail uh, every comparison and I, and I did a complete strip down of both of these so that we can compare the innards the outers everything so wait for that that's going to be coming but for right now i'm shocked as they say replicas sometimes they get good so all right let me get this open up all right so here we go as i sing sometimes you know one of these things is not like the other here we go so you can see the fake, the real, and yeah, we'll be comparing those in depth. But it's interesting to see, it really is. That's, a, that's one of the biggest giveaways is the thickness. This fake one is a huge. But this is also the Gen 1 fake. There's a Gen 2 fake that I haven't gotten my hands on yet. And uh, I wanna be able to compare it to, I think it's a little bit closer as a as a one-on-one a, a -on -one kind of rep of, of, of this. So we'll, we'll get to that one of these days. But anyway, I brought these along because Jay wants to get a 2100. And so we'll see. I want to make sure he doesn't end up with one of these. That was the goal of that. Okay, I have far too many watches. And yeah, yeah we're almost shocked. Thankfully, the way that they're spacing people in restaurants these days, we ended up having, you know, a large table just to the two of us and, and, and we requested a booth. So we were able to like spread these out and actually enjoy them and, and still eat our sushi. But this one is actually gonna go along with one of the ones in this kit. So I'm gonna wait to open it up for a second and then let me get into this one here. So this is actually a loner watch and I'll explain why I have it in a second. Let me get it opened up. Ta-da! All right, so this was bought, it's kind of like new, but on the secondary market, I guess. It didn't have the box, but it's got the hang tag. And I don't know exactly what this thing is called, but it's got like this coffee dial to it. And it's it might be called an espresso or something. I don't know, somebody let me know down in the comments but you can see the absolute beauty of that dial. So it's kind of like the cocktail time series, but it doesn't have the normal cocktail time, you know, dial where with the sunburst pattern, but it's got this, let me zoom in on this if I can. Yeah, so yeah, it's got that beautiful dial and that's what Jay wanted. So this one was kind of nostalgic for him He's letting me borrow it. And uh, yeah, it came on this awesome strap, the point clasp and all that. But let me explain why I wanted to borrow this one. This is going to one day get put side by side with the Manhattan, which is the rose gold and brown cocktail time. So again, this is the yellow gold with like this coffee or espresso dial. And so I wanted to be able to put them side by side. And if I'm lucky, I will have a third one to add to that comparison, which is the brown Zelos Nova. So coming soon, hopefully that works out and you'll see this one, the Manhattan, and maybe the Zelos Nova side by side in 4K. That's my goal anyway. All right, play some more weird music and then we will get a couple of these other ones opened up. All right. 
So what I did is I just went ahead and opened up all three of them. Y'all can see what this is, Zelos. This just goes to show you that not all packaging is a complete waste. For example, nobody's gonna use this box that this G-Shock came in. Now, I will say though, the top is pretty interesting and on the camo one, it's blue camo. So I kind of put it as a background prop every now and then, but the Zelos rolls, these things actually get used, which is pretty cool. But let's flip this open and see what we've got. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't even know that I remember what I all brought. So this might be a surprise for me again. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the number one stunner in my collection. This is this is my absolute, well, man, no, see, I wanna call them all my absolute favorites, and I just can't. I think the whole point of being an absolute favorite, it has to be like the one absolute favorite. Anyway, this is the custom one of one ZX chronograph with the Valju movement in it with the day date. So if you if you know Zelos and you know the ZX series, you know they didn't come with a day date. There are two. I repeat that two in existence. Neither one of them are the same though. This is a one of one, and my buddy Dane at the Celine Driver channel, he has the other one, which is uh, from Elshin's personal collection that he had had uh, made for himself and then later sold in a flash sale. But then Elshin um, had a dial left over and was able to build this one for me. And I absolutely love it. So the reason I brought this to Jay though was because, you know, I call these things chunky monkey. And the reason is, is because this Joker is thick. And I just kind of wanted to ask him, are all the value, you know, 7750 chronographs this thick? Because I've been looking at the Zen chronograph and it's huge and I love the copper dial in it. I think it's the 103, don't quote me on the model number on that, but it's like 16, 17 mil thick. I just don't love that. I mean, y'all know that I complain over, uh, if it watches anything over 10 millimeter, I think it should be thinner, but that's just me. Anyway, Jay confirms that, yeah, the movement really is just that big and these things are chunky and that's kind of the way it goes, but that the movement is absolutely amazing. And so that's the reason everybody goes for it. Okay, next one. This is the Steinhardt regulator with the ETA. It's a 6498 movement in it, hand wound. And I got this one for like pennies on the dollar from a friend of mine because he bought it and the hand, as you can see, is not, it's not on there. And the hand fell off. And so he sent it into the AD that he purchased it from to get it serviced under warranty. And he did that and he waited patiently for it to come back and arrive. And when it did, sure enough, the hand fell off a second time and he was not happy. He was not a happy camper, which I don't blame him. If that were me, I wouldn't have been a happy camper either. And so he sold it basically for parts or as a project watch. Jay, uh, it, he does modding, he does watch movement work and repair stuff. And so, so he's gonna help me with this one because I wanna kind of mentor under him or apprentice under him so that I can learn a lot of this. And so that's what this one's gonna be for. So, Project Watch, we'll see how this turns out, but um, I brought that along just to make sure that he was on board with helping me with that, and he was. Um, this next one, oh, the Visitor. I, this one had, deserves a wipe down because this black tile's amazing, but this is a tour watch, kind of a loner that I'm on, and I got to experience it. I've never handled a Visitor watch before, and, and so I jumped at the opportunity to be able to see this one. And it's pretty sweet. It really is. It, it really is an amazing watch. So I, the aesthetic is probably not for anybody. I can see why it might be a little polarizing, but I, y'all know I like funky stuff, right? I like unique designs and artistic type stuff. And so this is right up my alley. And I've been wanting to get, this isn't Fanta Black, but I've been wanting to get, there's a version three black or a Fanta Black. I wanna see if I can't find the blackest black dial possible. And yeah, this one, it comes close. I would put this up there with the inky black or a 65 that I did a video of. Anyway, so that's the reason I brought that just so Jay could check it out because otherwise he probably is never gonna see one out in the wild. 
let's see what I got here. Oh, and then I brought a bunch of Zelo. So this actually goes along with another package you're gonna see in a second, but um, it's titanium, blue meteorite dial with the Tamascus bezel insert. And so I wanted him to be able to experience one of these. Let me set that down over here. All right, and let me get this now closed on to the next one nope this isn't the one i want to do let's switch these around real quick because it'll tie into that tamascus bezel so first let's see what i've got here what did i bring along oh this is just the bronze and i say just right like oh it's just a bronze meteorite awesome with the edda movement right first world problems i'm so spoiled in this watch hobby but yeah so this is just the bronze meteorite that i wanted to bring him and share with him because i'm thinking about modding this makumegane with the black sands dial with the is it kintsugi i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right or not but with this modded dial and i think i want to put the meteorite in the Makimegane, and then I'm gonna put the Kintsugi in this bronze case and enjoy them that way, maybe for a little bit. Anyway, again, since he's teaching me and mentoring me in all of this, I brought these to make sure that, yeah, we can do it, but we should be able to, you know, both of them have the atom movements, and so we should be straightforward with that. Let me get these put up, keep trucking along. So the next two go along with this guy over here, the, the Tarmascus one. And y'all might have seen pictures of me posting this. This is the blue Timascus with the meteorite dial. This is a new addition to my collection and it is fantastic. And then I had a friend of mine get this one. This is the yellow Timascus with the meteorite dial. And he's letting me borrow them because I want to be able to film. Let me get it back on out. I want to be able to film all of these side by side so we can look at the subtle differences of them, especially the Makimegani and the Yellow Timascus, because at a brief glance, they might look similar, but they're quite different. So anyway, man, I've got too many watches, not enough time. All right. And now we're into the last one. And so I know this video is going a little bit longer than normal, but hopefully it's entertaining for you. So we're looking at this Squale. This Squale is a new addition to the collection and I got it because I have this one over here. Let me get this unwrapped. So y'all see even in the watch pods, right? I wrap them up in cloths. I've had this, and y'all have seen this on the channel quite a bit. This is the Azura, the Onda Dial Squale. 1521 something like that the bling bling jody did a great video on this he borrowed ashley's um and this is not ashley's even though i did i did reach out to ashley trying to buy his um after watching jody's video but i was able to get one for myself i've got it on this uh squale shark's mess bracelet and i've been curious because they make others like this in different dial colors and i've kind of just wanted to see what some of those are like and so I came across this blue one at a good price, so I jumped on it. Now this one, you can see, they're kind of the same watch, right? They're the same case and everything like that. They do have the same dial pattern, but the one on the left is like a dark blue, and in many lights, it kind of almost looks black or like a navy blue, but then in sometimes when you get in the right light, it almost has a purplish hue to it. And so this one is interesting. I'm still wearing it a lot more to see if I love it. I can say that I really, really like it, but I don't know why I love it the way that I, like, I love this one. The, this one is amazing. But then again, when I hold this one next to the Grand Seiko, it, I hate to say it, this is nothing compared to the Grand Seiko. The Grand Seiko is such a beautiful shade of blue. It's on a whole nother level. But anyway, they make a pink one of these and y'all know that I love pink and salmon. And so I'm actually thinking about getting it and then I'll compare all of these. But so that's why I brought these along. Jay actually is the one who helped me determine that this should go on a shark's mess bracelet. So when I had gotten this one, I had it on like a, it came on a leather strap and then I had like a Milanese. I tried to put it on there, but it was too thin. It didn't wear right. And so he said, no, pony up, get the Squally Sharks Mask. And he was 100% correct. So right. And so, yeah, that's where we're at with this one. 
on to the next one. Oh, this is a tour watch. This one is a stunner. This is a stunner. Let me get it in the light. This is the Solus Starlight Aventurine Dial with the Micro Rotor Automatic. This watch is awesome. I'm not even gonna lie. Y'all know that I have the Zelos Horizons Aventurine Dial and the Balticus Stardust. So I'm gonna be comparing all of these. I'll do kind of a not a review of this one just because it's pretty cool. And I'll talk about my experience with it, which has been, it's been interesting and fantastic, but interesting. And so I'll talk about that. And then I wanna compare it next to those other two because I just can't get enough of this Aventurine. It just really is so cool. So cool. All right. So let me put that back. And the last two, let me grab these out. I brought this one along with this one so that he could check it out. Now, y'all know that I've had this blue limited edition Zen 104 for quite some time now. And Jay has seen it in person. But I have this green limited edition, which I think is the 2019 limited edition 104 that I had not seen. And a buddy of mine had one and said, Hey, do you want to borrow it? And I said, um, yeah. Um, oh yeah, definitely. And so he sent it over and it's fantastic. Now talk about here. Let me zoom in on this real quick. Talk about the aventurine type style. This thing has a glitter or a shine to it. It's not as pronounced as the Aventurine. Let me get that Aventurine back out. It's not as pronounced as the Aventurine is, right? It's much more subtle, but in the right light, this green one just pops and it's such a dark, beautiful shade of green. I just had to bring that with him and share them. And these limited editions, you know, if you don't end up getting one, or if, you, if you're gonna pay a huge premium to get one, they're kind of hard to come by. And so to be able to experience some of these, I thought that was cool. And I wanted to share that with my buddy, Jay. So that's where we're at. That's all the watches, whole lot to look at. Sushi, of course, was amazing. We probably ate a little bit more than we should, which is kind of the drawback of going somewhere where it's an all you can eat or a buffet. I actually had to quit eating at all you can eat places quite a while back but the sushi is such a good deal that it's it's like 15 bucks for lunch all you can eat with a drink you can't beat it so anyway watches sushi and we'll call this one a wraps until we talk again my friends please remember what really matters and that that's not watches except for when you're bringing them to lunch with a buddy to experience the joy of this hobby with a friend who also enjoys it that's what it's about Keep the insanity sane, my friends. Mm -hmm.